In the sixth chapter of Ephesians, uh, verses 10 through 20, and for those of you that uh, enjoy the whole armor of God scripture, um, it has arrived in the scripture calendar of events. We get to read the whole armor of God passage, which is written by Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. A picture is worth a thousand words. And ever since I was a kid, I always thought armor, knights in armor, all that kind of thing. That was really cool stuff. Um, always wished I had a, a little uh, suit of armor toy kit. Uh, they had several of them that came out in, in plastic. And of course, uh, uh, my budget, uh, I can't round up a, a full metal reenactors costume for putting on the whole armor of God. So I had to do what the budget would allow. And that's, um, first of all, here comes the belt of truth. And I can see how it's fading out in the, in the special, <laughs> special way that the, uh, uh, the screen picks up on, on imagery. But this is the belt of truth. And depending on how I hold it, you can tell it's got a full length. Because I'm sitting down, quote, in the studio, I'm just going to keep this on my lap. I'm afraid if I buckle it, it will tear. And we need it to hold up for at least two more services. Uh, next, what I'm pleased to bring is, I think I can get this put on in front of TV land. So here comes the breastplate of righteousness. And I tried to make the words in, in the kind of cross that they used to have on those uh, tunics that the knights in armor wore. Uh, but the belt of truth, a belt holds things together. And truth is a good word for this analogy because truth also holds our life together when we speak in the truth. It draws us closer to God and one another. Then with the breastplate of righteousness, the teaching point on it is righteousness is about right living. And with the breastplate of righteousness, uh, false attacks and false charges can just bounce off. If we're living righteously, if we're right with God and right with each other, when people try and start rumors or accuse us of things falsely, uh, it, it just doesn't stick. Those kinds of attacks do not stick to us. Then next, again, this is very difficult to put on in the studio, and I'm, I'm not so sure how to make sure I have this the right way. But the shoes of gospel peace, um, get these all in the picture here. Uh, but we're supposed to put on the shoes of gospel peace. That's all part of the suit. Uh, uh, every soldier needs to have good footwear. And the key word here is the readiness. Be ready to put on our shoes when it's time to go, when it's time to march for the Lord. We want to make sure the shoes are ready, that we've got shoelaces that aren't uh, falling apart and tied together with knots. We want good laces ready to go. Uh, we want to keep uh, uh, our shoes of gospel peace in good working order because as Christians, we do want to be ready to serve. We do want to be ready to promote the gospel. We bring up next 
Um, I like this one. It's going to be difficult again to fit this all on the screen, but it's the shield of faith. And um, <laughs> uh, I'll have to turn it on the angle to get it to show up in Zoom. I hope this isn't uh, too big a distraction, all these visual illustrations, but the shield of faith, this may be the most versatile piece. It's, it's flexible. Uh, you know, it can go to the left, the right, up or down. As attached come in, we can move it around and be defending ourselves. And of course, no two days are alike. No two temptations are alike. So as problems, attacks from evil places come at us, to be able to move our shield around and block those things out, uh, that's one of the main functions of faith, is to keep us on course with God and to help us know that our homing signal of faith is tuned in nice and strong. Then if I can keep a hold of everything, all this heavy paper armor, put on the helmet of salvation. And I apologize if the words are, are backwards. And no, I'm not trying to put on a Roman bishop's hat. This is supposed to be a helmet of salvation. And the helmet's supposed to protect the spiritual mind. So we want to be clear in our minds. Jesus died to save me. Jesus died to save us. We need to remember the main idea of salvation, that God did this for us. Jesus did this for us. This is how much God loves us. This is why we want to put on the helmet, to have that saving grace, that saving love, that forgiveness offered to us so that we can put it on and have it be a part of our spiritual armor. And one other side note on that helmet of salvation, just like the other pieces of armor protect us, if there are any small-minded thoughts, the helmet helps deflect those things, help knock down uh, those small thoughts. We want to keep our mind full of the greater thoughts, the big thoughts on God. And then finally, try not to poke a hole in the screen with my paper sword here, but we've got the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. And the sword works for offense or defense. Um, on defense, it blocks the blows of e evil origin. So partnered with the, the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, uh, we, can, we can do a lot of blocking of attacks that come in and try and disrupt our spiritual life. At the same time, the sword of the spirit can also be an offensive weapon, not to offend people, but to strike out in love to do acts of random kindness, to demonstrate God's love. The Spirit leads us to where God wants us to show our love. And so that's the, the real use of the sport of the Spirit. It's not to dish it out. It's to share it out. It's to help pass out God's love. I'll carefully set aside some of my pieces of armor. Uh, so to uh, summarize, putting on the whole armor of God, uh, we consider these thoughts. Physical armor requires two things, metal and a blacksmith. Spiritual armor requires two other things, faith and God. Just as the blacksmith works with the metal to make a physical suit of armor, so God works with our faith to make a suit of spiritual armor. And this explains why Life can be difficult in times. In order to make a suit of armor, there's always something to be hammered out. Whether we're making physical armor or spiritual armor, again, there's always something that needs to be hammered out. Most important of all, we need to take up the whole armor of God. God offers it. We put it on. We choose to live inside it. When we choose to live inside the armor of God, we are, quote, living in God. We are living in God's will. Amen. So thank you everybody for joining us for this message on the whole armor of God.